Welcome again. Today we look at prescribed practical two for IB Biology first exams 2016. Osmolarity, the total concentration of the osmotically active solutes. Things like potatoes, pumpkins, apples all contain cells which are mainly comprised of water but dissolved in that water are solutes. The cells have their own characteristic osmolarity and this osmolarity can be determined from a simple procedure but before we go into this simple procedure it's essential that you have some good background knowledge about the process of osmosis so to get that background knowledge I would like you to click right here if you don't need to go there let's continue and if you're coming back from that lesson welcome back now let's have a look at the procedure for this investigation into the osmolarity of pumpkin and potato. An important part of this procedure is making the dilutions of sodium chloride. Here you can see a series of directions that explain how the various molarities are created. To make a one molar solution of sodium chloride, we must first determine the molecular mass or the molar mass of sodium chloride, Na, which is 23, and chloride, 35.5. Together they come to 58.5. An easy way to make a one molar solution is to dissolve 58.5 grams of sodium chloride in a one liter volumetric flask. This would give you a one molar solution of sodium chloride. But you can click right here to go back to an old video from my chemistry students about how to make solution. Once you've got the one molar solution though, you can dilute it with 50 milliliters of that original one molar solution with 50 milliliters of distilled water and it would give you a 0.5 molar solution. A similar procedure would take the series over to a 0.25 molar solution with a 50-50 dilution. To make a 0.75 molar solution, you do a 75-25 ratio using the 1 molar solution to give you 75 milliliters and then 25 milliliters of distilled water. That gives you a 0.75 molar solution. And then to get a 0.38 molar solution, approximately 50% of the 0.75 molar, you take 50 milliliters of the 0.75 and you add 50 milliliters of distilled water. And we will also use distilled water as one of the solutions in which we immerse the pumpkin and the Here potato. we can see the entire setup for the lab with our serial dilutions made at the front here beginning from one molar solution, the 0.75 molar solution, the 0.5 molar solution, 0.38 molar solution, 0.25 molar solution and distilled water. We also need sodium chloride, pumpkin tissue, and potato tissue. And we will use these cork bores to get nice uniform cylinders of both pumpkin and potato. And then we will find the mass by placing these pieces into a weighing boat and then using a very accurate balance to determine the starting mass of each piece of tissue. Then we will measure out 10 milliliters of each solution and label each solution in this series of test tubes. Upon placing these cylinders into the solution, we will start our timer and then wait for 40 minutes. At the end of the 40 minutes, you must first decant all the liquid in this test tube into a graduated cylinder. At that point you will quantify as precisely as you can the volume of liquid. A key part of the data collection requires you to remove this piece of tissue, whether it be pumpkin or potato, and find the mass after immersion in a solution of known concentration. Ideally, you should do five trials of each concentration. 
and then organize all of your raw data into a table. You should find the difference between the mean final mass and the mean initial mass and then place this difference over the initial mass multiplied by 100. This would give you the percentage change in mass. And if you've done this for five trials, then you should also be able to get the standard deviation, which you would use to produce these error bars based on standard deviation. Having set all of this up, you can estimate the osmolarity of potato and pumpkin by looking at the point where your graph intersects the x-axis. Moving on from this basic knowledge, it's up to you to think of creative research questions that would allow you to look at various variables and how they might impact osmolarity of plant tissues. And also, osmolarity with respect to animal tissues is quite important, for when organs like kidneys are about to be transplanted, these organs must be kept in solutions which are isotonic with the tissues of the kidney, which means having the same osmolarity as the tissues of the kidney cells.